Now, the main events we're looking at this week is the US CPI print and the fourth quarter earnings, particularly after the mixed print we saw with the non-farm payroll and the US ISM services print. So let's get into the week. So first of all, the Swiss CPI print was the first major data point we were looking at this week. Ideally, what we wanted to see is it coming in below markets minimum expectations that would have given the SMB even less reasons for the market to think that they will be needing to hike interest rates and would likely have resulted in significant Swiss franc selling. Now, we didn't see it, but there still is a Swiss franc Japanese yen sell bias. Now, if you just go through the logic of it, you see that the SMB, they forecasted first quarter, see here, first quarter inflation to be 1.8%. So 1.7% is only really what the SMB have been projecting. But importantly, throughout the whole year, they see inflation at their target, 2%. So in one sense, the Swiss National Bank could rightly say, job done. And that means they're less likely to hike interest rates. So there is a Swiss franc Japanese yen sell bias still in place. So it's not unreasonable to expect sellers of the Swiss franc Japanese yen from uh, market and stocks can be placed just above those recent swing highs, 172. Uh, and then if, if the yen keeps weakening from here, then you can always look for a potential, another opportunity. Um, but Swiss franc Japanese yen selling does make sense from a macro fundamental perspective. And the CPI print that's firmer than markets are expecting is only in line with the SMB projections anyway, so it doesn't change the big picture. Looking forward to Japan's CPI print. Now, this is often seen as a good indicator of where, um, so the J Japanese Tokyo CPI print is often seen as a good indication of where Japan's inflation is as a whole. So the prior reading was 2.6. Generally, the CPI is trending lower. Expectations tonight are for that to continue for the 2.3% prior reading to come in at 2.1%. And inflation, as long as inflation sort of remains around this kind of level, then the Bank of Japan is still expected to exit negative interest rates. Obviously, a very high print, you know, 2.3% or higher, start seeing increases in household spending. All of that is going to increase expectations of the Bank of Japan exiting negative interest rates. And broadly speaking, yen strength does still make sense. If you take a look at the yen on an index level, you can see that the yen has been building ever since December on a speculation that the Bank of Japan is going to be exiting negative interest rate policy. Japan, Japanese yen is still a buy on the dips. This does offer potential good value ahead of a potential interest rate shift coming up in spring's meeting, largely anticipated. So high inflation print out of Japan would likely give the yen a bit of a boost. Then coming into Tuesday, we've got some overnight data for Australia and New Zealand and Switzerland, Swiss unemployment. Uh, I'm not expecting anything major out of those data points, although obviously if there's out of consensus prints, it can always have an impact, but the big picture still remains. Germany, now ECB last rate meeting, they were more hawkish. Christine Lagarde said, you know, didn't even dis discuss rate cuts. Well, you know, significant slowing in the eurozone will mean the ECB will start to discuss rate cuts. Rate cuts. So the euro is very sensitive to negative data. So this just came in, you know, well below markets expectations. Should weigh on the euro, but everyone knows industrial production is pretty weak at the moment. So you know, a weak print isn't going to be a particular surprise. Just worth looking at around the edges. Eurozone unemployment rate. Obviously, um, if we start to see unemployment big moves in unemployment that will get the ECB's um, attention. If you start to see that really increasing, then the chances of interest rate cuts will also rise. Nothing expected majorly out of that. Australian CPI, now where the RBA are at is they are in a situation where they are very sensitive to high inflation and they will be more likely to need to hike interest rates, to hike interest rates, bring inflation down if we see this coming in high. Now, I haven't got the forecast distributions here, but a high inflation print should support the Australian dollar. That is worth one uh, event that's worth uh, looking for. Going through Thursday, we've got, some, got a few options coming out on Wednesday afternoon worth looking at because uh, rate markets are very sensitive to what's going on in the US bond market and US data. And that does make US CPI the most important print of the day, which is coming up on the Thursday. So CPI, if we see this coming in below markets minimum expectations, that's going to push, push back against some of the dollar strength. We see dollar strength, 
Very high valuations in equity markets, seen a pullback that's been supporting the dollar. Corporate uh, um, repatriation flows back into US companies from daughter companies for a accounting sort of reason around year end has also supported the dollar. So any reasons to sell the dollar, that's what we're looking for. And the best opportunity would come from a big miss. CPI coming in below minimum expectations will likely give us a reason to sell the dollar. You'd expect yields to fall and that would be a great potential catalyst for gold upside. So gold upside in a week CPI print looks really attractive. We did see gold get a nice bid on that wheat US ISM services print on the Friday. So, you know, another wheat print here. I'd expect a nice opportunity in gold for a short term scout. But remember the jobless claims as well. And we will want to see jobless claims also showing weakness. So coming in, um, you know, towards the high of expectations. That's what we want to see. So if we saw initial jobless claims, if if they start to fall, that's seen as more positive um, because less people are claiming joblessnessness. But if you start to see these increase, so if this initial jobless claims comes in, you know, above 220,000 and the continuing jobless claims, you know, coming in above prior, if we see them moving to the upside, then that would play into the Fed needing to cut interest rates, particularly if we see the CPI print low. So a miss in the CPI print to the downside, more people claiming joblessnessness, that would result in likely gold upside. On Friday, got uh, CPI and PPI data out of China and cha- trade data out of China. Ch- China is very uh, heavily sold at the moment, does look good value for long term buying as long as you know China's economy ultimately can recover and tensions between US and China don't continue to get worse. But very few investors are sort of positive about China at the moment. So it looks like a lot of the bad news is already priced in. So just watch out for the Chinese data. GDP, this is going to be interesting. Bank of England wants to keep stressing the need that the surge in wages and, and in services inflation in the UK means that the Bank of England has to keep hiking interest rates. So Bank of England keeps putting that pressure on markets. You know, we might need to hike, we might need to hike, we might need to hike. And the last interest rate decision sort of stressed that. However, if we see GDP miss significantly to the downside, then markets will start saying, no, we don't believe you. Uh, you'll have to start cutting interest rates to stimulate the UK economy. And, um, you know, the UK is looking like heading into a very mild technical recession. So a big miss here in the data look for pound weakness, that should be significant. Okay, big miss in the UK GDP, look for significant downside in the pound, good scalpable opportunity, and don't forget the consensus of the other prints that are going on at the same time, industrial output, manufacturing output, et cetera, et cetera. So do take these as a bunch. We'll have a a preview up for that uh, later in the week. The US PPI print, We'll also we'll have a very similar reaction to how markets react to the PPI uh, to CPI print on the Thursday. So that can also be a decent opportunity and um, we'll have a preview up for that. Now, the other thing to be aware of is earnings. A lot of analysts talking about earnings right now um, and analysts have made larger cuts than average to their fourth quarter estimates. Um, the fourth quarter earnings are expected to grow by 2.4%. Recent Reuters poll sees S&P 500 earnings rising to 11.1% this year after 3.1% in 2023. A lot of that is being attributed to falling inflation. And this is essentially expected to be the last kind of earnings increase for the S&P 500. And some analysts are expecting a sharp drop off for the first quarter. So look out in the earnings when we see earnings coming in. The thing to look out for is, you know, significant revisions lower, um, you know, our markets really, um, you know, negative about the prospects for the future earnings for companies. The problem here is that earnings are quite lofty. Um, You know, you look at the recent prices in the S&P 500, Dow, NASDAQ, Eurostox, DAX, we've seen some pretty good gains in equity markets. There's strong nerd earnings are needed to support these high prices, basically. And if we start to see a weakness in earnings, then we could see even further selling in stock. So do watch out for the earnings narrative uh, beginning this week and could have a significant impact 
in not only US stocks, but uh, global stocks as well. So they're, they're some of the key things to look out for. Main event, obviously, the US CPI and closely followed by the UK GDP print on Friday.